Hello everyone, today I'm going to talk about how to run foundation model on your Mac OS and in the iOS simulator. Uh, I like to put my conclusion at the top. So to summarize the process, first you have to install Mac OS 26 beta onto a separate partition that is not on your main partition. It's very important so you don't mess your main machine up. It's pretty early stage in the beta. So do that first. Once you have that, you simply download Xcode 26 beta 2 and uh, now you can run the on-device foundation model, both on the Mac OS end and on the iOS 26 simulator end. There are a little bit nuances of how to do that and how to make sure it's uh, done safely. There's some caveat as well because Apple is not doing their job properly. So some command that you might use to rely on doesn't work anymore. So yeah, if the simple instruction doesn't work for you, um, go ahead, follow this video. I will walk you through from the beginning to end how to run your foundation model on the Mac OS 26 bare metal and uh, iOS 26 simulator. So because a Mac OS VM does not allow you to have any Apple intelligence and you cannot install Mac OS beta on an external drive and uh, use Apple intelligence at the same time, that requires you to install Mac OS beta onto a physical machine. To get started, you first want to back up your machine onto a time machine. And one thing you want to make sure is that your time machine backup is up to date. Uh, you can check that by doing tmutil list backups. So this will give you a uh, list of update that can be used to restore if anything goes wrong. This will command will take a while to execute, but uh, you should see whatever backup you have, the date, it should match with whatever date is today. But if it's not, you should uh, start a new time machine backup and make sure and run this command again to make sure it shows up. Okay, I'm gonna break continuity a little bit. This is me from the future. So another way, if you want to triple insurance that you have a good backup and probably the most reliable and fastest way is to uh, check your time machine icon in the menu bar, check your uh, latest backup to whatever drive and uh, the timestamp. You can open time machine setting. Yeah, here as well. Do all those stuff then you should have all the backup to the newest possible timestamp. Okay, now you have a time machine backup that's up to date. Uh, you can come to disk Yuto and then uh, create a new volume called Tahoe Beta or whatever you want to. Should be really fast. Yeah, so uh, for this volume, make sure you have enough disk drive. I would recommend you have roughly 200 gig so you can play with it to the maximum extent. First of all, you want to fully shut down your Mac. Once you are fully shut down, on your Apple Silicon Mac, press and hold the power button. Yeah, it reminds you that, yeah, continue holding for startup options, loading startup options. So you wanna make sure you unplug all the time machine disk, uh, assuming you already have a backup. So now click on options. Yeah, select the user. Next, I want to enter your password. I want to select reinstall Mac OS Sequoia. Continue. Okay, yeah, you gotta agree with it. Now, make sure you select the beta disk you just created, not the main drive, okay? Continue. Select the user again. Install, you have to enter your password a couple more times. Okay, now just wait until this uh, to finish and we should have a second installation of Mac OS Sequoia. We'll come back when it's all completed. Once you install Mac OS, you should sign in with your developer account when you see this screen so you can update the beta and you can make sure your personal iCloud and the photo library does not get messed up. Also, it's a good idea to not use your personal account for development. In case one account mess up another, you don't want it to happen in either direction. So finally, we have Mac OS 15.5 installed on the separate volume. Now, what we're gonna do is go to setting, general, software update, and toggle this beta updates to Mac OS Tahoe 26 developer beta. In case anything goes wrong, we still have a time machine backup. So, We'll be back once this successfully installed macOS beta. Welcome back. 
So we have updated to Mac OS 26.0 successfully and onto the correct drive as well. Okay, one thing I find interesting about Mac OS 26 is that uh, when you run this software update list full installers, and then you do software update fetch installer 26.0. On Mac OS 15.5, you run the exact same command, it will fail. It says fail to find the installer or something like that. And uh, even if you do 15.5 on Mac OS 15.5, uh, it will fail as well. I can't believe they fixed it. What are we going to do now? We're going to follow Apple's tutorial and uh, set up the environment so we can see uh, how the foundation model works. So first thing we do is to create a new folder called that developer. That's very nice. Uh, if you create a folder in this specific name, uh, Apple even give you a hammer, which is an Xcode hammer. So now we're going to create a new project. So I'm pretty lazy and I think I find a project from Reddit. Um, yeah, just go to here. I just want to see if the uh, project will run on uh, iOS simulator at all. We're just going to go here, clone the project. There you go. Okay, before we start it, you want to make sure you're downloading Xcode 26 beta 2 because beta 1 has a bug where you cannot run the on device foundation model on a simulator as listed on this Reddit post and uh, beta 2 should have fixed this problem. And also before we run too deep on this, so you want to go to setting and go to Apple Intelligence, just make sure your computer has Apple Intelligence available. Um, and uh, I think English Canada is fine. Uh, English US is fine too. But if you tried everything I'm about to try and you still cannot get a uh, foundation model running on the simulator, uh, consider change the Apple Intelligence language to English US and change your region into United States as well. Yeah, and then reboot your computer. So this way it will force Xcode to use simulator that's appropriate to the language because Xcode simulator used the Apple intelligence on your computer as the backend for the foundation model. Now let's grab the project we cloned. Yeah, if you have been following along, it should work as advertised. Click on summarize text, might take a while. Look at that, perfect. As you can see, the own device foundation model works on the simulator. We're gonna check out a few more projects to see what it does and the, what the uh, foundation model on the simulator is capable of. Apple does recommend you to check out the foundation model on your device. So once a more stable beta is available, I recommend you to do that before you ship your app, of course, you want to test your model on the actual device. Uh, but for now, uh, you don't want to mess with your main iOS device, just like me. This is pretty good. Okay, it did one joke and cannot keep doing it anymore. That's good. I'm just going to check out the next project. Let's put up the exam. That's pretty cool. Uh, on device generated travel. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, as you can see, it does work. If it doesn't work, uh, as I said, please check your region. Please check that Apple intelligence is enabled on your computer. And most importantly, please check that you're using Xcode at least beta 2. Or if future Xcode, somehow this broke again, download beta 2 again. So this should work for you. In my opinion, this is the most important thing Apple announced in WWDC. So we can use this model for free and it's quite capable. Happy coding and wish to see your app very soon in September. See you in the next video. Okay, fantastic. I just click on update on the system setting. Now my computer is updated to Mac OS 26 in my main volume. So now I have to wipe the disk and uh, restore from Time Machine backup. So let this be a lesson to uh, do research more properly and uh, make sure you have Time Machine backup. Otherwise I won't be smiling right now. I'll be crying probably for the next three months for not having a backup and upgraded my Mac OS to the newest version.